Welcome back to another episode of Rut Busters. I'm the captain and this handsome chap on my right is Justin from Justin Guitar. But you know that because you've watched the last six or seven episodes. Seven. We're up to eight. So we're up to eight, are we? Yeah. Well, there we go. So. so it's a lucky one then. Yeah. Well, it certainly is. If we, uh, we're going to do the Chinese scales, that's why it's going to be lucky. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we're going to start with the Frigia hexadonal <laughs> mixolydian version. <laughs> we're definitely not. <laughs> no. Um, so, but what we are going to talk about is the cage system, woo woo. which is something that lots of people ask about. And, lots, and you said lots of people have said to you over the years that you should check out I the cage learn. system. Yeah. So um, I kind of touched on it there in the, at the end of the last lesson. Yep. So uh, has that already clicked anything for you? Like what have you, have you has, it, has it made for any more questions about the cage system? Um, I didn't really, I didn't really ask or think about it in terms of the order. I want, one assumes that there is always a set order. So, you know, so, so the C goes to the A. Goes, goes to, to the, the, the G. What's uh, that spelling? Caged. Hey! Yes. So, so I get. So for the, uh, for those who haven't seen the last one, let me just do a quick recap, and then we'll go through and actually explain like how you use it in the real world. Okay. That so that wasn't the right place to play it. We but started anyway. with the C chord. Yes. So you're right. So that's a C chord using a C shape. Yes. Yeah. Then we went to this chord, which you could, most people would play like that, including yep. me, but just for the, you know, to clear, keep it clearly defined. Yep. That's a C chord using an A shape because yep. it looks like the open A chord, right? Yep. Then we have C, A, G. G. Now, you were straight away going like this because you like that G chord like that. But yep. another reason why you don't want to play it that way is because you don't have any fingers left to yes. replicate the bar. So if you play G that way, yeah. Yeah, and slid that up to, so again, there's the root note, the note yeah, C, yeah. and then first finger. This is a bit of a pig, and I'm going to explain, I'm going to go through each one of these chords yeah. and explain the pros and cons of each one and how you actually play them, yeah. because very often you don't actually, like, that's that's a difficult chord, and you just wouldn't, ah. yeah, no. So second finger, third finger, little finger down, there we go. Horrible, but, I mean, it's horrible. A, yeah, it's a difficult chord. It's like, it's like that YouTube video of the guy with the massively long fingers that he's been... <laughs> I've seen that, I'll, I'll no. find it for you. Yeah, oh, well, okay. I need to look I'll that up. I'll try and find it. Oh, the things that I'm missing out on yes. in the world. Okay, so we had G shape. Yes, C A G E, The most common okay. bar chord that everyone learns. And then C A G E D D. So D is also a bit of a fizzy one to learn it. But you, you were saying... Yeah, I, I don't oh. tend to play it like this. I'll, I'll take you through each variation. That's it. That's it. You, no, you're good. Good. Back where you were. Back where you were. That's it. Good. Yeah. Oh, but you're not... Not playing the thicker play string. No, 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 no. Yeah. You can, but there's another... I'm going to talk about this. What I, what I thought we'd do is... is it, sorry, Justin. Sorry, what's yes. in my mind? Mm -hmm. If I'm playing the D shape... Now, obviously, yes. if I'm playing the D shape down here, I'll yep. only play the top four strings. Yes. So if I'm playing the D shape up here, what I... Yes, only play the thinnest four strings. But you can play the fifth... Like on this chord, D, you yep. can play this. Because it's a note in the chord. It's just the same as this yeah, note, isn't it? Three. It's note A. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. If you want to play the thicker string, you'd have to play the same note as that one, which right. is that D with an F sharp bass, which I'm sure yeah. you're familiar with yeah, that yeah, chord. Yeah, that's, that's uh... Yeah. So if you play that, you can play all of them. Right. Yeah? Right. So if you if we're doing bar chord versions, you often, we would you often have to do a that, similar that thing. That thumb bent round there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Angus Absolutely. Young is a big sort of. Well, not just <laughs> Angus. All of the a lot of people play like "Wish You Were Here" is that chord, or every is time it? it's a D chord, it's that. So, okay. it's a, so, so you think you can tell? As soon as you add it's like, oh yeah, that sounds like the yeah, 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 yeah. Most people don't. Anyway, I digress. You a little. It's my fault. That's all right. I'll let you off. So what I want to do now is go through each one of the shapes and mm -hmm. explain the the way it's really used in the real world, because some of them, like that G chord, it's just like, didn't know who wants to play it like that? It's too yeah. difficult. So yeah. there are practical ways of dealing with each one that are, is kind of what I wanted to, to okay. chat through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the by the way, major chords and minor chords all fit into the cage system as well. Okay. So we're gonna, I'm going to look yeah. at major and minor chords, because some of the minor chords throw up some really interesting yeah. uh, problems that we can yeah. suss out. So... That's, uh, we're going to start with that one because that one's an open chord and I just want to take them as bar chords because the bar yeah. chords are all movable. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Now that one's a C chord because that note there is the note C. It's a C, yeah. So if we moved it to here, sixth fret, what chord's that? 
Uh, e flat. Good. Okay, so whatever the note name is of that yeah. becomes the major chord. The minor one, just the. I'm sure you're familiar with that one already as well. Right, that's yeah. the minor chord. Again, that's the root yeah. note. So if we move it here, it's E minor. Up one more. That's over here. The E minor. Okay, major yeah. or minor. Nothing too weird about that. Yeah. You can play it that way. You can play it that way. And do remember as well, you've got all your sus chords. So you can have sus four like that. Yeah. Sus two like that. So that's the, this so one particularly is a really, so really, really lovely chord. Anyone that's learned bar chords out yeah. of the book has learned the 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 E and the A bit from yes. Caged, haven't yes, they? Yes, exactly. Already, so we, it's just not taught. And the other way, ones are it? the ones that are a bit more difficult. So yes. that's there's a reason why those yes. two are so common, right? As we're about to discover. Yes. So this chord. So it's a C chord. It's G shaped. There's the root note. Okay, we're there with the the third finger yep. on the thicker string. 8th fret in this case, but that's a hard chord, right? It's a horrible hard it, chord. It, 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 it's awkward to play, and I can't think of a single example where somebody's used that <laughs> full grip, okay? Sure. But there's a lot of examples of people using most of it that are really nice. Okay. And the first one is if you start with this C chord, now roll your third finger onto the fifth string, slide it up two frets, and now play. put your first finger down and play again. No, just, no little finger, first just play finger the down. middle. That's it. Middle four strings only. That's it. Ah, watch, watch, watch. Sorry, Nearly. I didn't... Watch. Just watch. Yeah. So we've got the C chord. Yeah. Third finger rolls onto the fifth string. Oh, right. Then that slides up two frets and then first finger covers those same yeah. three that, that the third finger was covering before. That's it. Yeah. Now that would be lesson one on Hendrixisms because he would always go. So everything's staying in the C chord, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is yeah, still yeah, C yeah, chord. It's still C. Yeah, it's still a C chord. Look, because this is, watch what this is, Lee. Look, that's that. If yes. I take that chord and take those two notes yeah, on the outside yeah, yeah, away, yeah. which are the horrible ones, we're left with this, which is actually a really perfectly nice chord. Mm. Okay? You can actually put in the putting the uh, little finger down as well. Yeah, is, exactly. It's not too bad. It's, it's not that, too bad it's at this all. This one that's the pig. And we don't need it most of the time. If the bass player yeah. is keeping himself busy, then he doesn't yeah. need it, right? Okay. You can also play just this, the thinnest four strings. That's it. Yeah. So that would be a nice way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you'll see. could also do, I, yeah, yeah. I don't use this, no, right? You can kind of, there's one example that um, one of the Frashanti songs that uses this in the snow or whatever uses that grip, but it's pretty rare. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a full on Hendrixisms in a couple of lessons time, That's right? Cool. I'll explain all that stuff. So the, all this but, thing of me thinking that those embellishments are a transition between one chord and another, they're not. It's just an embellishment over the chord well, it is. It is. It's. It's transitioning from one chord grip to another grip via a, a scale note or, or or a sus note. You could think of it as lots of different. Yeah, but it's not. There's not like a different embellishment depending on what chord you're no. going to go no, to. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's the bit that I there's, always. There's, think. What happens is the right. shapes all link together, and once you learn how to link the shapes, which is why people would have been saying, "Lee, learn the cage system. Learn the cage system," because once you understand the links, moving from one to the other becomes a lot easier. Don't drift off somewhere else now. Sorry, I can just see. I can see it going. I know. I know. Wait, well, wait, 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 wait. One second. Wait. There we go. Whoa! Hey, wall tiger. Wall tiger. <laughs> okay. So that was A shape. Yeah. There's G shape in a practical way, yeah. rather than doing the the ridiculous one. Okay. The next one was the E shape. Oh no, it's not. We didn't do the minor chord. Now, how do we play G minor as an open chord? Oh, horrible. I'm, uh, hang on a second. Why isn't there a G minor open chord? That's horrible, where, isn't where it? Where is it? Why is there no G minor chord but, in all the books? When you're learning, you think, think back, Lee, think so back to learning need... guitar. Have you ever seen a G minor open chord? I don't think I have. Wait, so what have you got to try? <laughs> yeah. Now you know why there's no G so minor just, open chords, because it's a pig. Horrible stretch. Yeah. So you could do it. There's, there's the G, there's the major, make it into the minor, 
but it doesn't even yeah, sound good. No, so it it's awkward. Even sound. And it sounds because the note's too bassy. Exactly. So, and if we had this one, if we had this version yeah. of the G, and we changed there's the B, the major third, yeah, we'd have yeah. to move that down a fret to move it to there. So if you're going to do this, you could oh, kind okay. of do that. But yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. really awkward. And then we're still happy to miss that out. So why wouldn't you just, do, you know, if you're going to do go that far, you yeah. might as well do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that the as far as chord grips go, it mm. exists. Yes. It, it's kind of there with the first finger there, but especially when we start moving it to C, which would be that. I mean, seriously, why would you do that when you can do this and have yeah. all more or less the same yeah. notes? So yeah. it exists in theory, and particularly if you were learning, say, arpeggios, you might learn a, a, a minor arpeggio that way. Yeah. Okay, but you wouldn't tend to play a chord there. Yeah. It just doesn't really fit. Yeah? So that was G minor shape. Now we're on to the E. We have major and minor. Nothing exciting going on there. What about what are we going to do about the sus4 here? Oh, well, you can still use that. Okay, but if you do if you do that, if you move little finger down, we've got we've introduced this note here. Haven't we? Which one? Uh, if we move little finger down to do oh, I sus see. four, so uh, we've introduced a new note, which yeah, is yeah, the yeah. what note? What note is it? Oh, uh, the seven. Yeah, it's the seven. Well done, bang. Okay, so that would be seven sus four. Okay, oh, and you can use it as an embellishment, but it's not strictly a sus chord unless you get rid of it, which you would do by doing that, like like that horrible version oh, I see, of an A chord. Oh, it's almost like a like a exactly, exactly. You can do it that way, yeah. That's the one. But that one's nicer, yeah? Just to do it that way. That still works though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, okay. You very rarely see that. You, you very oh. rarely see it, but it works. And you can do sus too as well. So look, if you have to refinger things because we realize that there's the major note. Mm -hmm. One down is minor, one down again is the sus two. Mm -hmm. We can put those two down. There was the major, minor, sus two. Recognize that shape from anywhere? Who plays that shape a lot? I don't know, you have to tell me. John Mayer. John Mayer, right? Yeah. That's, and you can do all sorts of nice things with this. This. That. So, so we're playing, sorry, a sus two of a C chord yeah. up here. Yep. By exactly. playing an E yep. shape. E shape. So E shape. And then we've moved that third of so the chord down two I'm, frets I'm just... and we ended up with this. Play it this way for us, Lee. So little finger on the tenth fret of the fourth string. A little finger. Fourth on, string. Of that's the it. Fourth string. That's oh, it. That's... Good. That's the one. And then first finger, seventh fret on the third string. Doesn't need to be a bar, just the one note. Lift off third finger. We don't need it. Okay. And then second finger down there on the eighth fret. That's it. Then... Just those three. And then if you want, you can reach thumb to play the eighth fret, which is there. That's it. Oh, that's that thing that John Mayer does in the. Um... What? It... Yeah. He's playing. God, I'd admit, you know, that, that's a super way. cool. So hang on, let me just. Is that kind of where you you'd start to see people playing the E shape chord? Yes. Or like this here. So you can have. You can flip from the the sus. You can throw all the sus. And here, in. particularly the Hendrix. That's why you tend to play with the thumb over if you're doing Hendrix or Frashanti or any of those guys. So I've got this That's C it. chord. So C chord. But you're wrapping that round and you're yep. just playing. Yeah, those three on the top with the thumb. That's it. But if you're going to do that, it's really important that the tip of your second finger mutes the fourth string. Right, because that's and the, what's and the edge the note of up. the first finger, the thumb, sorry, mutes that one. So you only want to, when you strum like that, Lee, you want these two to be muted. So you're yeah. only going to get. The, that's it. That's it. That's where you're going to learn little. Have you learned little wing before? I do, and uh, although I, I play it utterly wrong, and therefore wouldn't play that bit in it. But but okay. So that's that's the thing that you'd need to learn to, to get your convincing oh, little nice. wing on. It, uh, you know what? That's the, actually the trickiest bit is muting the. It thing, is. Isn't it? Muting the strings is the hardest part of doing that. Lick. You can always use th exactly. You can use third finger. As long as you keep the thumb muting the fifth string. That's it. Got it? 
So where's, okay, where's so the four? Sus two. The, where's yeah. the sus two? Sorry. So, there, there's so the that's third. the four. That's, that's it. That's the third. So it's no. two down. So there's the third. Yeah. There's the minor. There's the two. So there's. Oh, so I've actually got to play it. Down yeah, here, exactly. That's it. And now second. Ah. Thing, that's it. But put your th little finger there instead of your third finger. That's it. Okay. That is going to take some of that kind oh. of practice. It's going to take practice. some practice, but yeah. what will be better is when I show you in a couple of lessons time the Hendrix trick, the way he approaches it is a little different. Remember, this, this it, lesson is supposed to be just on the cage thing and I've kind of diverted a little is it, bit. Is it illegal that, that I might want to mute the D string with my, the tip of my first finger? No, it's it really not illegal. Not how it you... doesn't really matter. There, there are some reasons why it might be beneficial later, but... I mean, see, the thing is, lots of people play with a different technique, right? If Jeff Beck had come to lessons with me when, you know, and said, oh, I want to play heavy metal rock, but I don't want to use a pick, I would have said he was mad. So, you know, there's no rook. You'll get it. You'll get it. That's a, uh, that's a whole that's different horrible. practice session, which you don't want to watch now. OK. So, anyway, that's how you can play a sus2 if you want. Yeah. Right? Using the thumb over technique. So, we had the A shape. Mm -hmm. We had the G shape. We had the E shape, we have major and minor of each one. Then we've yeah. got the D. Okay, now this one again, there's a few examples in kind of recorded music guitar stuff that I can think of where they do use it like that. Much more common to play this, just yeah. like the little shape. But then for me, that's much more C shape. I, I see that one as being part of this. Right, okay. Than, than this. This one is very common to play th just these three. That's it. And now the other trick, if you're going to do that, is putting the second finger down onto the there. Okay, so that way, that is a nice grip. So that's the that effect you're doing this. Exactly. It's the same as playing the D with the F sharp that. bass. Woo! That's it. And a really good example of that particular grip is this one. A song you might know. I love that song. I've never okay, heard that. Okay, so that. that. What, chord, what chord is that then, Lee? What chord's that? Oh my God! So it's got uh, it's got a. Um... Well, what shape is it? What's the parent shape? We would just look at it five oh, the seconds D. ago. Sorry, the, D the D chord. Yeah, 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 yeah so there's yeah, the D yeah, chord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if that's if it was the D and it's been moved up, how how far has it been moved up from being a two, D chord? Two frets. Frets. So, so two frets higher e, than. It's an E. So this. It's the same. In fact, people who haven't learned that chord might play it as an E chord and it wouldn't sound bad. So, won't you know my name? It sounds fine, mm -hmm. but here, did you know? You get that nice da, da, da movement of the root note. And you're playing it as, as, the, as the D, but. Yeah, that's it. But yes. Here, aren't yes. You? Yes. Yes. Yay! Yeah, nice chord. It's a lovely chord. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, it, it is just a question of, of just yeah. being confident to just go straight to it. So, one of the things that I think, because this all, remember this all stemmed from like, what are the other chords that you can play when yeah. you just get given the thing and how do you know well, it just says C and C and D, and you're playing all of this other stuff. Where do you get it from? So, yeah. part of the journey, learning sus chords is a nice kind of simple introduction on being able. Well, when it says D, you can actually play D sus two and yeah. D sus four. Simple. Yeah. But now I'm saying, well, okay, you could also play D in all of these different ways on the fretboard, and each one of these ways has a different thing about it, a different trick that works nice. Like this one. Yeah, this one had a really nice sus chord, sus two chord. Okay, yep. but the sus chord of this one, sus two, was really awkward. It, look, it's the same notes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but here it's easier to play. Yeah? So when you have, if you can play a C chord like this, and you know that you've got this fancy stuff going yeah. on in the G shape, you've got this going on on the E shape, and then the D shape. Actually, I, I must admit, I don't really use that one so much. Some sort of yep. fancy stuff you could do there, and then having the E shape again with more hammer on y stuff that you can do with that. Each shape has its own little set of licks or tricks associated with it that are easy. 
Now this is a really important point, Lee. People tend to do the stuff that's easy for them. If you watch somebody, even like Jeff Beck or Steve Vai, they're not doing the stuff that's really hard for them, they're doing the stuff that happens naturally. And I often wonder that a lot of us, including myself, have spent loads of time trying to practice stuff that's crazy difficult for our fingers, that are just not naturally uh, working for us. We spend ages doing it, but then it never actually comes out when we play for real. Whereas the guys that are really good seem to accelerate and accentuate the stuff that they can do and do it even more. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was. I, I'm hoping you guys. You he's he's off. He's not even listening to me. Not even uh, a little bit. Yeah, I was just sort of. Even though I said my, this is really important. It, my mind was still processing the information before, so we might have to rewind <laughs> that bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. I, no, that, that, I, I'm, that is... I'm actually really happy that you're inter that you've gone like, oh, hang on, this might mean this and that, that might mean this, and this is kind of what I hope might happen for you out there in internet land is that if I'm explaining this sort of stuff that maybe some little light bulbs go and go, oh, that's why that chord works that way or whatever. That's actually really good. Often probably as good or as, as valuable as the kind of the whole lesson concept stuff. That's it. Oh, yeah. Uh... Just back. Yep. You good? Yes, you could do that. But if you do that, you're clashing a little bit with that other note on the bottom. But So C, C chord. A shape, a shape, G shape, good, G E shape, shape, E shape, E, 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 one more, that's it, and D shape, uh, last one. Ah. Uh, Start with the root note. Uh, okay, so look, Lee, here's the trick for this one. You use the octave all the time, so just use your octave shape, and then put your first finger on that, that's it, now... If, okay, it's top four only. Yeah, uh, up. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm not, I can't even play the D right. That's the one. Okay, so there's D shape, and then we're back to C shape again. Now C shape, I'm going to do as I'm going to do C shape as a D chord, Lee. So can you do this one? You're going to do C shape as a D chord. Yeah, just because so we I've were going through and doing all C's. So, no, so C chord, C shape, C shape. That's it. Move it up two frets. Now, how are you going to play that while you put a bar down? So go back to your C chord. Play it without a first finger. Okay, your first finger got chopped off in the war, but you still have to play oh, a full C chord. Perfect. <laughs> that's it. Move it up two frets. That's it, perfect. Now this is a really, this for me is the, we said already that most people learn E shape and A shape, right? Mm. Now G chord's a bit of a pig, D chord's a bit of a pig. This one's a real nice one. That's it. Yes, yes, you got it. Can you think of, a, have you learned a song that uses that grip before? Um, okay, nice one to do if you haven't. I think so. Okay, and then yeah. if you finish, it's your favourite band, All Saints. You love it, don't you? <laughs> Do you see that you missed that bit because you were looking away? Uh, right? So all of this stuff he's doing, A shape, E shape with the. He does yeah. all of that lovely yeah. Hendrixy he fills. It's, it's super a great Hendrixy, song to it? learn. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice song to learn that trick if you fancy. Yeah, look, I, yeah? I need to just uh, head down now and just kind of get. So here's, here's what I want you to try and do. Yeah. There's a little, have you heard of the cycle of fifths before? No. You've never even heard of it. Most the people have heard of it fifths. and gone like... I don't think so. Yeah. Think so. Okay. So a cycle of fifths is just like... It's a religious uh, order, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's like the, they've got funny handshakes and stuff. Okay. <laughs> a fifth is yeah. the interval between that, like the two notes of the power chord. That's yeah. a fifth. Yeah. So if we said we wanted to go round the cycle of fifths, We'd go from this note, which is say G, mm -hmm. to D. Mm -hmm. Then we'd find D here and we go D to A. And then we go from the A, which would be A to E. Mm -hmm. Then we go E to B and then B to E. And if we keep going around that, we get a circle that covers all 12 notes in, that exist in okay. music. So it's just a way of structuring all of the notes that we've got, all 12 notes. The, and that doesn't really any, make is, sense. Is there any point but, to it yes, at all? The, okay, so the, the point, I love how blunt this goes. So the point is that I want you to practice the chords in that order. So start with a G chord, play me a G. Now play a G with an E shape. Okay, now E chord with a D shape. Start with the root note, use your octave, use your octave. That's it, now D, no. Ah! That's it, good. Now what comes after D in cage? A C. C, so look, uh, at where little, look at where your little finger is. That's the root note. So put your second finger there. Second finger, now form your C shape, yes. 
good. Now, just pause there for a second. Did everyone notice that? I said, keep your second finger there because that was the root note, then build the shape around it. Or if you're really smart, you could learn where your root note was there yeah, with the yeah, little yeah. finger and yeah. form it from that. But knowing where the root note is is the key thing to forming the chord. Yeah. So there's the C. Where's the A? A one. Good. And now G. Use your third finger slide up. Trick. G with G. Third, the... Third finger slide up. Oh. On to the next string. That's it. Good. First finger down. Done. Excellent. Okay, so that was all G chords. Now we're going to do D chords. Yeah. So D chord, open D. That's it. Now, next shape after that is uh, C. Good. Uh, so I put your and it, easy. Second, you, yeah. So I'm using second that finger the, there. Second finger there. That's it. Put the rest of the shape down. Good. Next shape after that is uh, C A. a. Uh, and it's a C. It's a D shape we're playing. Yeah. D chord, but D an A chord, shape. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Now G shape, third uh, finger rolls up, that's it. Good. Now E shape. Good. Last one, D shape. Uh, and we're playing a D, aren't we? So we're just yeah. back to basically a... Yeah, good stuff. So that was going around the cycle of fifths because we went G to D and then we'd go A and you keep yeah, it in yeah. E and B. And all it does is gives you a structured order of chords that are far apart mm. from each other. Right, so it's just, that's it. There are other uses for the cycle of fifths, but that's a good way of um, structuring practice around the caged system. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So, any of you out there that are interested in this, if you go to my website and you do a search for Rut Busters, you'll find all of the episodes that we've done. And within each one, there's a little session, a section <coughs> called Related Lessons. And if you click on that, there's a whole lesson on cage system where you can get like little tab diagrams of all of these different chords and the ways to play them as well. So I think that would be useful. I'm going to print it out for Lee afterwards. Yeah, so he's got I'm, it as a reference thing as cool. well. That's cool. But does that, any questions on, do you understand now what the cage system is and how it exists? Yes, I do understand what the cage system is. I need to practice it more and then I guess familiarize myself. Uh, it, it need, I suppose like everything in guitar, it needs to become second nature to just go, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Uh, and at the moment it's very, it's, it feels very forced, so I just and need to... A really nice way of doing it is to find some songs that use each shape, because yeah. one of the things that I think all of us are in danger of is learning stuff we don't really need to because we think we should. Right. For example, for me, the harmonic minor scale. I spent, I must have spent... 50 hours learning that scale as a kid, whatever, and it was a complete waste of time because I never use it. I don't particularly right. like the sound of it. It was only good if, like, when I tried to learn a few Yngwie Malmsteen licks that might have been useful, but, you know, I just wish I'd spent my time learning something that was going to be more useful for me. So rather than spending, like, painstaking hours trying to learn a particular yeah. grip, see if you can find some songs that have got them involved. I gave you a few examples as I could as I you know, as we went through each shape. But try and pick one or two of those tunes maybe and learn it so you're learning stuff in a context of a tune that you actually enjoy. Yeah. It's more fun than doing it any other way. Same goes for you out there as well. Cool. Any other questions or are we, no, are we good? No, I think this is good. This was, this was progress has been made uh, and uh, I think we should just crack on okay. with uh, the next episode okay. of Rut Busters. Uh, right, cool. okay, let's okay. go. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.